Hello everyone. I am the modern insulator collector. But if you just want to call me by my name, call me Ben. Of course today I'm doing a video on my insulator collection. Yes. Look at these insulators. Aren't they beautiful? And if you look closely, they are my large scale models. Yes, I love Thomas and Friends, and I am 16 years old. But, just so you know, before you make fun of me, there's a big fan base on this on TV show. There's many people my age who love it, and a lot of adults too, who like to collect the models like I do. So, in this video, I'm not going to go over my insulators like perfectly, like some people do. I'm just going to give you kind of like a quick glimpse of my insulators. And I might throw out a couple couple like company names, but I don't know. I just some people talk about their insulators and I have like over a million um different kinds of insulators. So only quick descriptions and glimpses. That's what we'll do today. If you look right here, um I have some like National Insulator Association stuff. I me and dad actually went to this convention a long time back during the summer. But we signed up as members, we are getting like cool magazines and stuff, and I got a really awesome book under there too, that talks about multi-part um, porcelain or like glass insulators, and I got a t-shirt, so if any of you collectors out there have ever heard of the National Insulator Association, I'd go to their conventions because, I mean, you're missing out on a lot of cool things you might like to see. So first off, we're going to start with my broken collection. As you can see there, I have a really cool um, bullet flashlight from like a long time ago. It kind of sucks, but hey, kind of nice, right? This is all my broken stuff I found in my collection. Kind of a shame some of this stuff is broken because some of this stuff is actually really hard stuff to get. Some of this is easy to get, but like this insulator right here, which this is a locky insulator. Like that, that's a hard um, thing to get. Some of these bell insulators are possibly difficult. Um, these spools, give you a glimpse of my spools that are broken. Um, I can kind of get spools in a lot of places, so it's quite all right that these are busted already. Not really, but this is the telegraph um, spool used on a telegraph um, thing, but it can serve a purpose as holding up a neutral wire on a power line, which is what these do. These and then if you don't know what neutral is on the power line, it's actually your ground wire. Probably already knew. Um, these bells over here, these really nice bells, um, they have chips on them. They kind of do count as broken to me. Chipped or broken, doesn't matter. Yeah, some nice bells ripping off a pole, ripping down poles. Um, this insulator, I don't really know actually where to put this one, but nice Ohio brass. It actually is cracked right there, but... I don't know if I should have it in my chip collection or not. So like, here's a telegraph insulator. So yeah, this one's chipped on the bottom, so this goes to my chipped or broken collection. This was an eBay buy. Very nice insulator, but unfortunately when it freaking came through the mail, like, I don't know how the hell it broke, but like, and I glued it back together and it looks really actually crappy. But like, it broke coming through the mail. Um, yeah, this big insulator, um, they tore some poles down like a couple years ago, I think, and they actually just, I mean, this insulator was in good shape, but, like, they tossed it down the ground and they broke it, so, um, quite a shame. They broke this nice insulator. Broken or not, it goes in my collection. As you can see over here, I got, I have more metal hardware. If you want me to do a video, separate video of my metal hardware, I can. But, I don't know. I just have these up here to display for now. This is, um, this one I painted. I did, like, a test paint job on it. Like, a nice silver. It was originally just kind of dark, dull gray. But, um, I got two more of these. Um, this is kind of a test paint, too. Not really complete. This was a bigger pin from much bigger insulators they used back in the day. Here's another, um, pin. Um, this is probably, like, the third size up. Very nice long pin um, for lifting your insulators up high. This one is in between size, a little shorter than that one, but not as short as this one. Over here, I have um, here's some telegraph insulators. 
I got right here. Six of these Ohio brass ones. Um, got general porcelain. I think that's what that is. Um, yes, it has a black border on the bottom. I that was something I don't want to do with it. Um, some of these were from conventions. Some of these were either offline or found. Like this one was a found one. I like the glaze on this one. It's a very interesting um, glaze design. Um, got a nice Thomas um, telegraph insulator right here. Here's a mini or here's a much more tiny one. Over here, I have some suspension insulators. This one's made for um, like an antenna. So like yeah, this one's like really tiny. And let me bring this one up. This is a real um, tension insulator. This one came off a telegraph pole. Really old, but I count it as modern insulator because they still make these and these. Um, but here's an antenna one beside the um, real tension insulator. Like, yeah, so this one's like really small. This one's really big for the bigger um, power lines. Let's do that loud. Um, right here we have a really nice, um, this is like a, um, suspension insulator that goes on like a telegraph pole, I think. Very unusual one, um, this one was found, not by me, but by my dad. It says, um, this is upside down, it says Racco on it. Racco, kind of funny, I feel like Spanish. All my other telegraph insulators go over to here. If you look right above these telegraph insulators, I have some nice, um, big insulators. I got, um, these are much made for much more higher voltage um, lines, and these ones would go on the biggest pin I have, with the fattest um, end. There's the bottom of this one, hold it in front, pretty big, um, it's not focusing. Nice insulator, kind of heavy. Got another one right here, here's another one right here. <clears throat> this is the Thomas insulator. And you might actually notice on here, if you look closely, it looks like this one had like a paint job or something. When I, this is my, I think my very first insulator, and when I got it, it had a few, um, it had a few, um, chips up here. So what I did is I took a bucket of plaster, and I, um, filled those spots in, and I shaped them in the place when the, um, plaster was like half dry. And then, yeah, I let it dry, I took some sandpaper, smoothed it down. The black paint I used, there was some black glaze already up here, so I decided to make the top black instead of like its original color, which kind of was black. But um, yeah, I made it black, made the top black. Kind of makes sense anyway, since these kind of have it too. And of course we need to see where it was molded, which way it was sitting in the kiln. So I made these spots white, and I like the white designs anyway, it gives it some feature. And you can see it says Thomas down there. I drew, I redrew um, a logo on there with um, a permanent um, metallic marker. I used gold because gold's a grand color. And I painted it, and then what I did, I just sprayed some clear coat on it, some just just some normal semi-gloss coat, so it could um, start to shine a little bit. It doesn't have a pure pure shine, but the, it shines pretty well, which I'm very pleased. And um, yeah, that's that's. This is its finish. It's all finished off now, and I'm actually pleased with how it turned out because it turned out very excellent. So, yeah, the insulator is actually good as new. Now, as a repair top, it can be reused. But this is a collection. We're not. We're not going to use these insulators. We're going to admire them. Over here you can see my um, spool insulators and my um, spool brackets with insulators on them. I have a really small one right here. Um, this one, I got this off a pole at this abandoned house that was just on the ground. Pretty cool. And this um, bigger version I got from a garage sale. Very nice. These, um, these were garage sale buys. That was a garage sale by um, this really big spool insulator um, got from that convention I went to. I got this one too. These two also came from garage sales. 
over here we have some more. Um, I got some triple insulator brackets for um, bringing your house wires in. You got your neutral would either run on top or bottom, but I think it runs on top. Usually in the middle, probably too. You got your neutral and your phase A and B, which comes into your house. Sometimes you got C coming into your house because they use three lines sometimes. This was found on the um, on a pole that was near a railroad track with telegraph poles, except these poles were on the opposite side of the um, telegraph poles. This one um, right here, I got off some poles that they just threw down, and it's in this construction um, building area where there's this junk and some currently some more poles still standing there that have insulators just dangling off of them. But this was on the ground with some stuff, and I got all three spools. I actually got all three spools with this one. This one up here only had the top two. I had to order this spool offline so I can make a complete um, bracket. This one right here um, was found. Very nice spool insulator. I found this in Indiana, around like Muncie, Indiana, and I'm pretty sure you guys should know where that's at. Very fat and very um nice bracket. If you if you go out into that um out in that part of Indiana, you'll see power lines with a lot of these still on them. Um, this insulator right here, the bracket I originally got off a telegraph pole. It was um yeah pretty modern um piece they had in the pole, but this um insulator was a te is of course a telegraph insulator, but I had to get this insulator of course from a different um metal piece. And so, since it didn't have any place to be, I thought I'd use it on here and fill the um, missing insulator and on this one. So this bracket now has a nice insulator on it. And even though it's a telegraph insulator, it still can work for the same exact um, thing. And I have three of these brackets. I got one here, of course, one here. The spool came with this one. Um, everything was together, so pretty nice. Got a white one. This one has some yellow paint on it. This white one was on buy, but this bracket, the white spool over there that was broken actually was on this bracket, but I just, I, t I tossed it off and I got another white spool and I got this at a garage sale. And um, um, this bracket right here, this is a nice, much nicer version. This spool insulator I got off a different pole, but yeah, this bracket didn't have a thing with it. Um, so yeah, I filled that in too. And I don't know if you notice, but all three of those brackets, instead of um, a little key going in here, these actually unscrew. I'm not doing it the right way. This is this one's tight for some reason. Why? But see, it unscrews. And that's how they do it here in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's how their um things are set up. If you live in like Indiana or Michigan, I don't think they do it like that. They don't. They're Brackets aren't made to screw in like that. But here in Cincinnati, and I don't know about Upper Ohio, I don't think they do it either, but in the Cincinnati area, they do it like that. Over here, we got a bunch of pin insulators. Most of these um, insulators were um, either found off erect poles, um, and ones like and the ones like these were um, bought at like um, that convention I went to. Or a couple of them, which I already am spotting one, are buys off of um, eBay. Like this one, for example, this nice chance and Slater. This one's an eBay buy. There's chips on it, but I don't know. I'm just gonna count it into my collect into my own good collection. These two insulators were also offline, but these ones are kind of nice. These are um, some more newer insulators. It is currently 2016. And these insulators were um, made, if it'll focus, in 2013. So, um, yeah, they're much newer insulators. They're only like about three years old now, but pretty nice to have some much newer things. This one right here, this is a chance insulator. So it's a chance right there, and it's kind of actually engraved a little too. It looks, just feels like it. Some of the la some of the bottoms are different, like they come out more kind of kind of different bottoms where the laps are. These are um these ones right here, of course, are made for much more lower voltage. Over here, if as you can see, 
I have, um, these insulators are usually used to feed much, like, really vol low voltage lines, like, I don't know, like, just regular wires, or they're, fe um, house feeders, which means they feed the wires coming into the house. Um, these right here, these two right here, I actually didn't find. If you go to Home Depot, you can actually buy these, or it's not Home Depot, excuse me. If you go to Menards, up to the electricity section, um, you can actually buy these insulators. So, like, I bought them as on collectors, so they're co they're part of my collection. They're not going to be used for anything, ever. This one, kind of nice. This one has paint on it. I'm working on cleaning it off. This came out of some rubble on, off of a house. These three up here were fines. Um... I don't know what kind of insulator this is. This came off a telegraph pole. Kind of unusual insulator, but I think it just holds the little wire up. These right here um, were buys, all three of these. Yeah, this one's nice. Has a big um, metal um, base on it. Really cool. So does that one. Instead of like the back on this one just being like pure ceramic. And this one's really cracked. Yes, good thing it got taken off. This one actually says Jocelyn on it. One of my spools over there says Jocelyn too. As you can see over here, and there's way more insulators still, oops, like going back there. But over here, and you can see my cutout over there, which I'm going to get to, are some more insulators. Um, mo more modern stuff and some much older stuff. And much more smaller insulators too. Like, these ones are some much more newer ones. Not the newest, of course, but at least made in, like, 1960s or 70s or at least 50s. This is an Ohio Brass Silent Type. I like this one. Pretty cool. You see a lot of them like that here in Cincinnati. Got a nice um, set of three. Um, this one's an online buy. This one's a round one. And this one is actually a fog bowl insulator. And if you don't know what fog bowl insulators are used for, I mean, they are used to keep the wires from touching the pole, but these are made to be in more wet, um, moistured places or in contaminated areas. But, um, I don't know. But if you go out, if you live out on the East Coast, like, you'll see a lot of line, power lines having these. I live in Cincinnati, so I'm nowhere near power lines that usually have these fog bowl insulators. I'm usually around all the pin insulators, but a nice fog bowl insulator. I'm use these by the sea too, ocean. Nice locky insulator. Pretty cool, but that's what these are. These are fog bowl insulators. This is my first and only one I have in my collection. Up here, got some possibly telegraph insulator. This one was a buy. Nice pin co. Um, we got some blue ones. This one is a um, um, convention buy. Got Canadian porcelain. Very nice blue one. Um, this blue one over here actually too. This blue one is general porcelain. Um, I got this one from an antique shop. Um, $12. Possibly too much, but... Very nice. I like this one. One of my favorites. Blue insulators are always cool to find, but... Trust me, I'm never going to find a blue insulator. Got some more. I got two of these. These are um, porcelain product insulators. Says it right here. Got some blank insulators right here. No markings on them. Very um, awesome glaze color. This one's a much more brownish glaze, and this one's more um, reddish glaze. More red tint to it. Um, this one right here is cool. This is a Pinco. Kind of, kind of has the same features as those, but this one's more. This one's more thinner. Bottom comes out really far. This one has. Um, if you look closely at the um, surface up here, if it can focus. Come on. I'm trying to get the focus for you guys. But if you look closely, anyway, you can see it has a rough surface. The reason why, and I have more insulators like that over there too. But the reason why this has a really rough surface is, it, is so the wire going around can actually grip easier. 
so um yeah this one has a nice rough surface pretty cool i like to feel it too kind of nice these over here were um bought insulators they were bought from a convention um nice insulator nice orange got a nice lap insulator 1930 this one's really cool i like this one especially got um this one right here this one's a thomas this one was um from a garage sale when I bought it too, it had a wooden pin on it, so like I was going crazy. I'm like, oh, that's old, but it's new to me, <clears throat> even though it's like old. Um, over here, we're gonna get over here a little more. Got some more insulators. Um, this one right here. Oops. Um, this is like this is an eBay buy. Let me grip it on my hand. eBay buy. Over here, got some more Thomas insulators. Um, these were from a convention. Um, very nice. These two are the same exact insulators, but the only difference is they have a completely different glaze color. And you can see that that one's reddish orange, and this one's a more brownish um, color. Got a nice pin insulator over here. This one actually came off a telegraph pole. A couple of the um, ones back there, white ones back there, did too actually. Um, I think they just had them on as temporary insulators. But, um, and I know it was a temporary insulator because if you look right here, it says 2002 on it. So this is much newer. Got some nice small ones over here. Um, Penco, very nice. These are, um, convention buys. Got a nice chance, um, insulator very, for very low voltage. They're my chipped ones over here. These right here, um, I got from a thrift shop these um this one pinco so is that one um this one right here this was a find someone else found this but gave it to me anyway because i knew i liked insulators nice locky high top very cool insulator i like how the inside is not glazed just like these two um that don't have the markings on them over here we have another one i found this one we came up to a cross in my run on the side of the road that I want to go back to and I just want the metal pins on it part of it was sticking in the ground and when we pulled it out of the ground this actually popped out of it um, so yeah I didn't expect to find that we just took the cross member and the supports and they're downstairs right now but um yeah this insulator popped out of the ground I was going crazy I'm like there's an insulator nice um, porcelain product insulator it's kind of hard to see what it says right there um, yeah, I found this one, um, around, this was, I went up to Michigan for my birthday, um, for my, for, so it was like my birthday weekend, and, um, yeah, I found this during that time. So this insulator holds a place in my heart because this is like a birthday present. Very special, very special, very special find on a very special day. Um, got another one right here, Ohio Brass, kind of a triangle shape inside I like this one um back here we got some nice suspension insulators bring the camera over um over here we're facing the back side of my um thing got some nice suspension insulators here um I got a lot of these um white suspension bell insulators very nice. A lot of different companies actually made these, but these came off the same group of holes. Um, if you notice this right here, and this one too, the reason why the glaze is like that is actually because of electricity damaging these insulators. It's also on the inside too. Um, good thing they took these down. It'd be a big short circuit. But these are, um, yeah, these insulators are just going bad, you know, that's why they're, they're just really old. But that's what that is. That's electricity damage. Um, got some more here, um, got a nice set of three, got a, um, nice set of three down here. I got a lot of these, um, this one on the end right here is actually an eBay buy. All the rest of them were found on some poles, so, got a nice set of three right here, nice set of three. Got another nice set of three right here. These bells over here, pick them up. Um, they were wrecking some poles, some really old poles. And they actually left the side, stuff on the side of the road. And I picked these up. Um, nice lap insulator, 1941. 
or 47, excuse me, what the frick. And the bottom one's a porcelain product. It's like a really cool, I got these off the side of the road. You can't see it, but um, this one over here, this one's found in Michigan. This long thing didn't come with it. I just put it on there because this insulator actually had one like that, had this piece, but it lost its piece. So I, um, I got this one off another pole and I gave it a new extension. Very nice balance slater. This one's kind of grayish color. I actually was doing the um, paint, a test paint job on this. Um, this is acrylics paint though, so it's kind of coming off. But I did like a um, like a silvery glitter color. Got yeah, I did the lettering there in gold. Kind of funky. Over here, I'm gonna, I'll just disable them so I can show them to you. I got four of these balance slaters. Um. A lot. Two of them had a test paint job, but just on the back. I did silver spray paint. Um, yeah, nice insulator, really thick insulator with a thick butt too on it, thick back. Very cool. Got four of these awesome wrecked poles in Michigan too. I really like these ones. Fortunately though, they don't have any company name on them, so I actually don't know who made these. But in time, I'll probably figure that out. Over here. Is my cutout. This also came off some poles in Michigan. I got my I got a um, bracket for it too, so I can mount it on a cross member. Um, the only thing about this cutout, though, I'm not gonna be able to pick it up. But this cutout actually does not have its fuse on it, unfortunately. So I just I picked it up without its fuse. It's too bad. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's my first cutout, my only cutout, of course, right now. I'll be happy to get some more in the future. And now the last little bit of my collection has to do with these last couple insulators and these spools over here. Um, these ones over here, um, these I think are some substation or either big transformer type insulators because um, this metal is actually um, molded into the back of this insulator. Um, very nice insulator. These are at a um, thrift shop. Um, nice lap insulator. Nice lap insulators, 1928. Um, they're really cracked. This top actually was broken off. And I, we glue, my dad got some special glue to glue it. So it's glued and you can see where the crack was, where it came apart. But the reason why I actually broke from the beginning, and this one also is showing those signs. Not from where it broke, but where it's cracking, currently cracked. Um, when I got these, there were some metal things um, around that around the top of them and it actually it was kind of choking the top of the insulator and this is and this is why these are cracked the insulator was getting choked on um, fracturing and cracking and um yeah but I got them off and these insulators are lucky too that they're still in their um still in the whole piece good thing the metal didn't destroy them yet they're they've been saved by me because I bought them last but not least Got some spool insulators. I got three of these these brackets. This one actually has a thing in the middle. You can see it right here where I'm pointing at. Um, nice spool insulator. Um, these are some garage shell buys. I don't know what kind of bracket this is or what this bracket was even mounted on. But yeah, it's kind of, it's really neat to have these. Um, I guess. Got some nice spools too, and they're all the spools are all the same. Yeah, if you look right here, it's not chipped, but they just, they didn't glaze it right there. Hey, you missed the spot. Yeah, very nice. Well, that's my insulator collection um, for you guys. Um, there's this one guy I'm going to feature on my, um, I want to mention to you on this video. This YouTube account on name is called Bariac Maniac. He collects insulators, and I like his videos. Cause he also tests stuff too. Well, he tests insulators and do, he does really cool um, high voltage um, experiences. You might already know him, cause so if you like insulator collecting, um, go to Variac Maniac's channel. You can he has a big um, montage or not montage, just a big video of his insulators. And I have to admit, he has some stuff that I wish I had. Yeah, I kind of have some of the stuff he kind of has, but. He has some amazing stuff, so I check him out.
But again, thank you for watching, and happy collecting. I hope you find some really interesting type of stuff.